Good evening and thank you for joining us here tonight for Halton News. It's Friday, May 15th and I'm Jessica Kading. It's Road Safety Week in Canada and despite COVID-19 restrictions leading to less traffic on the roadways, the number of preventable fatalities has actually increased this year versus last. Deaths related to inattention on the road has increased by 300%. There have also been increases in fatal collisions due to speeding and lack of seatbelt use, as well as impairment. OPP Chief Superintendent Rohan Thompson says, drivers need to carefully consider the main behaviors and actions that are linked to the many lives lost on our roads every year. Fatigue and prescription drug use are forms of impaired driving. Aggressive driving isn't just about speeding. It includes tailgating and other unsafe maneuvers. Distracted driving isn't just about cell phones. It's also about programming your GPS or eating behind the wheel. Safe drivers mean safe roads. Drive like your life depends on it because it does. With the Victoria Day long weekend ahead of us, we urge you all to drive safely. There are 18 newly confirmed COVID-19 cases in the Halton region since yesterday, bringing our new total to 618. There are currently 132 active cases in the region. Still, they say provincially the numbers are looking promising and the provincial government has announced that some seasonal services and activities will be permitted to open as of tomorrow, as long as certain work safety measures are in place and social distancing continues. Golf courses will be able to open tomorrow, but the clubhouse is only to be used for the washroom and the restaurants can only open for takeout. Marinas, boat clubs and public boat launches can open, as well as businesses that board animals, such as horse boarding stables. Private parks and campgrounds can also reopen tomorrow to start preparing for the season ahead, and any owners that have full season contracts can begin to access the park again. After this Victoria Day long weekend, even more workplaces will reopen as Ontario's first stage of reopening will begin on Tuesday, May 19th. That being said, it is important to keep in mind that social distancing rules will still apply and Ontario's emergency legislation prohibiting social gatherings of more than five people, in, even inside of private residences, is still in effect. You're therefore asked to continue to keep at least two metres away from anyone who lives outside your home. While the provincial parks have been given the green light to reopen and start preparing for the season, Conservation Halton Parks are not provincial and will not reopen until May 22nd. While the City of Burlington's park have remained open throughout this crisis, certain activities were limited or prohibited. Some of those rules will start loosening this weekend. Burlington Marianne Mead Ward clarifies. So the best thing to do is to plan ahead and check where you want to go. There are so many different parks and facilities. Uh, Conservation Halton, uh, you'll want to check their website. They're looking at some openings next week. Royal Botanical Gardens is looking at some openings of some trails, but no parking lot access uh, this weekend. City facilities, we never closed our parks, so our parks are open for walkthrough, but we're also encouraging people, you know, if you want to come with your, with your household, the people that you live with, put down a blanket, bring out your own lawn chairs and sit for a bit, uh, that's okay, you know, that, that's fine. Kick a ball with somebody again in your own household, but there's no organized classes, our amenities are closed, and our parking lots remain closed because that's really the only way we have to uh, take care of crowd control. So stay in your neighborhood, that's still the message. Uh, get out and enjoy some fresh air uh, and, and definitely call ahead if you're going to any other parks. And what about fireworks over this Victoria Day long weekend? So we haven't changed uh, the city policy uh, on fireworks, but that policy is that they're only allowed to be set off on private property. They've never been allowed in public parks unless they're part of a city run event. Of course, we're not doing fireworks. Uh, you know, we, we do have virtual, uh, there's virtual fireworks people can watch, but uh, in your own backyard, not in a city park, not on the street. We are discouraging people. They can be quite disruptive to your neighbors. Uh, so be respectful. If you're on a big property up in the rural area of Burlington, probably uh, you can get away with it. Uh, but for us folks here in the urban setting, we would really discourage it, but it's not prohibited. Okay, thank you so much for your time today and enjoy the long weekend. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Those virtual fireworks the mayor was referring to involved augmented virtual reality and can be found by visiting snapped.com slash Victoria Day. Of course, with the provincial emergency order in effect, there will not be any public display anywhere in Halton or the province. For those still wanting to privately set off fireworks, well, 
For those of you in Milton, the Milton Fire Department would like to remind you that setting off fireworks in public places such as streets or parks is prohibited and that gatherings of more than five people are not permitted. In order to legally set off fireworks, you must obtain a temporary permit from the Milton Fire Department ahead of time. You don't need special permission to use sparklers, however, but you still are advised to be cautious doing so. In Halton Hills, fireworks are only permitted on your own property if they can be set off safely without causing fire, and they're not allowed on any day over the weekend except for the holiday Monday. The town of Oakville is not issuing any permits for fireworks to take place in public spaces as they're hoping to discourage firework use as well. For more information about the specific bylaws that will apply to you, call 311. We were also able to connect with the mayor of Halton Hills, Rick Bennett, today, who commented on the status of the town's parks and says there won't be much of a change scene just yet. They've kept their parks open right from the start, including their cemeteries. A lot of municipalities even shut closed their cemeteries. So we've kept them open at all times. What we did do, it's like uh, under the provincial order, was close down the skateboard parks and playground equipment and soccer fields and the ball diamonds, etc. So the sports amenities inside the parks are closed, but our parks are open. So people want to go for a walk, jog, walk the jog. So that's not, that status quo is still the same for us. We have uh, put jerry barriers in all of our parks, meaning cars cannot come into the parks and park the cars. Now, the leash-free zones and tennis courts, they can't be open until Tuesday. So that's another reason why we're not in a rush to open up. But so the leash free zones, they are, um, it's just a matter of a padlock, you know, they're gated. So for, they can't be open until Tuesday. So I would, I'm pretty sure we'll have our leash free zones where our little fur babies can get exercise. And uh, so that'll be Tuesday. Tennis courts might be a little longer. But I'm sure by the end of next week, we'll have the tennis courts all up and running. And then once that's open, then we'll probably uh, open up our parking lots. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis, MPP Jane McKenna's office has been flooded with phone calls. So they extended their hours about eight weeks ago and continue to take calls from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. I was able to connect with the MPP today and heard about some of those calls. Yes, thanks so much, Jessica. I'm actually thrilled to be doing these weekly updates with you because obviously so many things are fluid and change constantly. I just wanted to let you know we had 600 calls this week in our office. Uh, one which was beautiful, I'm not sure if you saw on our social media, we had two couples that wanted to get married and were unable to get their licenses here in Burlington. And uh, Ken, who's my chief of staff, and Peter that work here, worked adamantly to make sure that they got that and they did uh, Heather and Selena did get married and we actually put that out on our social media so we were thrilled with that. We have obviously people will phone in clusters right so we've had a lot of people call because obviously people that were paying one dispensary fee of 90 days are now paying obviously uh, the 30 day, uh, 30 day dispensary cost whether it's three to four to whatever dollars that is. So now under the Ontario uh, Benefits Program um, you won't pay anything until July 1st for dispensing fees if you're on that Ontario Benefits Program. But we also have uh, made sure that, uh, you know, if your income has gone down 10%, that you can go to the Trillium um, uh, Drug Benefit. And then obviously your uh, uh, dispensing fees would change as well, like the Ontario Benefits Program as well. This upcoming Sunday will mark the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. It was on May 17th of 1990 that the World Health Organization declassified homosexuality as a mental disorder. So May 17th is now a day to draw attention to the violence and discrimination still experienced. To learn more about how you can support the 2SLGBTQ plus community, you can join MP Pam Damoff on her Facebook page at 11 a.m. this Sunday for a discussion with MP Mark Maholland and MP Rob Oliphant. And now for those of you with a cottage, you may still be deciding whether or not to head up there this long weekend. Our Melissa Candelaria is standing by at our studio in Milton and she recently spoke with one of the mayors in cottage country. 
Melissa, there has been some debate about whether or not cottagers should be visiting their summer homes while the emergency orders are still in effect. Are those communities ready for the influx of people that may drive up there? Yeah, Jessica, and you know, uh, this weekend is considered traditionally the unofficial kickoff to cottage season for many communities in Muskoka. So um, I reached out to Graydon Smith, who's the mayor of Bracebridge, to see what he can expect for this weekend. And uh, basically, he started our conversation by saying there are so many unknowns. Have a look. But what has gone on over the last eight weeks certainly you know, speaks to, uh, I think, some degree what will happen now. So, you know, if we go back eight weeks ago, we saw that people were having problems getting um, groceries and the food supply was a, a challenge and that there was real concern around the local hospital's ability to manage a, a severe outbreak. You know, this weekend, I think we're in a different place. Sure, there are lineups to get into grocery stores, but that's everywhere. So food security isn't particularly an issue. And having had conversations with both the hospital and the Minister of Health, I, I'm not sure that hospital resources are the issue we thought it could be. Um, so I think we took the right steps at the time, encouraging people not to come up. But right now, I, I'm expecting people to come up, hopefully only property owners that uh, come with their family members. And they still need to do, I think, all those right things, bring their own supplies, self-isolate as much as possible, try not to contribute to any chance of community spread. Um, so I think we'll see uh, May 24th with a twist. And I can agree it's going to be a May 2-4 with a twist. In particular, the back and forth between year-round residents across Muskoka. There seems to be a divide among some of them in a sort of us versus them mentality. A feeling Mayor Smith says he hopes doesn't persist. The mayors in Muskoka and the district chair sent an open letter out last week. Uh, talking about that, trying to get past the uh, you know people's uh, concerns, and and this has really been based around people's fears and concerns. And because things were very disruptive and very upsetting, frankly, in the middle of March when we found ourselves in a situation that we've never been in before, it it certainly made people react with uh, emotion, and that has carried on to some degree. And I think people uh, are some people you know don't want anything to happen until every case is eradicated. But we're in a different time now. We, we know more um, than we knew eight weeks ago in terms of, again, food security and, and health resources. Um, so, you know, I, I think while some people may still be concerned, they need to realize that the whole province is moving on to some degree and moving into uh, stage one of uh, what is hopefully a, a recovery and, and that we have to as well. And our property owners in Muskoka are key contributors to our community, and we've got this great 100-year history together. So I'm hoping this little blip, which has caused some emotion, again, specifically on social media, which sometimes on its best days is a bit of a tire fire, frankly. Uh, I hope we get over that quickly and get back to this fabulous relationship that we've had for so long that is you know, dependent on one another. Well, there you have it, Jessica, one of many leaders in Muskoka who welcome their seasonal residents with open arms. Of course, all they ask is that not only do you keep yourself safe, but everyone safe around them. With that, uh, I'll throw it back to you in studio. Thanks for that, Melissa, and thank you for being with us here on Halton News. We do need to take a short break, but we'll be right back with your May long weekend weather forecast after this. Welcome back to Halton News. The Burlington Food Bank does not have a means test, meaning you don't have to prove that you're under a certain income level in order to qualify for their food. This is particularly helpful right now when many have had their income temporarily reduced due to COVID-19. This is Robin Bailey, Executive Director of the Burlington Food Bank. And uh, we just wanted to let people know, because we've had a couple of questions about what finances uh, we ask about and those kinds of things. Uh, we're really just trying to figure out if we might be able to help you out a little bit more, guide you towards a different direction. Um, so there's no real uh, sort of funds that you need to uh, be below for us to be able to help you out. Uh, we understand with COVID-19, um, a lot of people have lost work, and so they maybe did really well last year and aren't doing well this year. So we don't ask for notice of assessments or things like that. We really just want to help you out. Uh, for those, um, we've also heard some stories which are troubling. 
of people that are maybe taking advantage of the food bank, we ask that you don't do that. There's lots of people in our city that need our need our assistance. And so if you're taking, it means that they aren't able to access the, uh, the help that they need. So please uh, have a great long weekend. Uh, I think it's supposed to be a beautiful day. Uh, for one of the one of the days anyways, uh, get out, get enjoy the sunshine and enjoy the fresh air. With some nice weather expected tomorrow, I'm sure some of you can't wait to get out to those parks, but I'll just quickly remind you that although the province has allowed for both provincial and private parks to open, Conservation Halton is not opening their facilities this weekend. They will do so on May 22nd. These parks include Rattlesnake Point, Hilton Falls, Mount Nemo, Crawford Lake, Robert Edmondson, Mountsburg, and Kelso Glen Eden. The good news are, is that they are working on that plan to open for May 22nd. If there is a park that you want to visit this weekend, you should check online ahead of time. And now, taking a quick look and a beautiful view of Oakville's 16 Mile Creek as we head into our local weather forecast. Unfortunately, there's lots of rain coming our way. Tomorrow is definitely looking to be the best day of our long weekend weather-wise with full sun and a high of 19 degrees. Cooling down Sunday and even cooler Monday, both days cloudy with rain showers throughout the day, so it looks like those virtual fireworks will be your best bet. The good news is that the sunshine will return for both Tuesday and Wednesday of next week as things warm back up. The Milton Chamber of Commerce has their free webinar for chamber members on Tuesday, May 19th at 1 p.m. where Kelly Gray, who practices law in Oakville with a focus on employment, labour law and litigation, will discuss how businesses can emerge from the COVID-19 shutdown and go over some frequently asked questions. To register, go to MiltonChamber.com. The Oakville Chamber of Commerce will present a COVID conversation with Dr. Janet Morrison, the President and Vice Chancellor of Sheridan College. That's taking place on Wednesday, May 20th. It will be live streamed on the Chamber's Facebook page and will also be airing it here live on your TV. And now a look to how the market closed out today. We have a good news, feel good story for you coming up next. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us here on Halton News. I'm Jessica Kading. Gardens across Halton are going to be a bit brighter this weekend thanks to the Bach Elger Choir. Unable to do their annual flower fundraiser, the choir banded together to come up with a way to not only deliver flowers this year, but also help a local greenhouse keep business going. For the last 31 years, Bach Elgar Choir has done flower fundraisers every year. So we sell spring flowers and then a little bit later we started also doing poinsettias before Christmas and selling them to our choristers who would then sell them to their friends and family and to the general public if we could get hold of them. So this is a tradition that's been going on for many years. Um, this year we had a problem because with the COVID-19 we had to stop our rehearsals cancel all our concerts for the rest of the season and we still had this fundraiser going forward. So we contacted the grower which is uh, Zomer's uh, Greenhouse in Milton and we asked them how do we do this because they, are, they were still considered an essential service as a farm they were still able to produce the plants but they had no way to distribute them. We had people who wanted to have plants in their gardens but we had no way to see them at our regular choir rehearsals or anything like that. So we decided we had to sort of put on our thinking caps for about a month, I think it was, and we were trying all different scenarios so that we could abide by the COVID-19 regulations. And we sorted it out so that we accepted, um, we accepted our orders by email. All the payments were made through e-transfers and now we've instead of having one common site where people come and pick up their plants we have spread it out over 12 different locations between Burlington and Ancaster so that people can come stay a safe distance apart only have a few people interacting at any one time and I for example I have eight people coming to pick up plants here and they will all do it from a distance I'll put out their plants they have a 15 minute window to come and pick them up and then I'll just sort of wave from a distance 
So it's worked out very well. Um, we decided that we're not running it as a fundraiser this year because it's just the wrong time to do that. And really we're just all aching to get some flowers and beauty into our lives. So we decided to sell the plants at the wholesale cost. Um, because of this, we also advertise that our, our um, supplier is a family-run local business and they have all these plants they can't get rid of. If nobody gets them distributed, then unfortunately they would probably go to compost. So what we did was we um, spread the word and the word went like wildfire. So we probably sold four times more than we would normally sell. This is a way for all of us who are kind of down in the dumps, at home, stuck in, not doing anything, to look forward to having some uh, bright colors in our lives and spreading them around our community. Choir members started those deliveries yesterday and will continue into tomorrow night. We did reach out to Zomer's Greenhouse, but they were busy doing deliveries themselves. But the owners, Jeff and Angela, sent us a quick note saying they were overwhelmed by the generosity of the members of the choir. And they went on to say, quote, the amount of work they put in to organize this fundraiser for no benefit to themselves or their organization is humbling. United Way Halton in Hamilton invites you to participate in Local Love Day virtually. The idea is to help give back to local agencies during COVID-19. For example, you could make thank you cards for frontline workers or record yourself reading a story aloud for online kids programming. There are all different kinds of activities to choose from and it's all happening on May 27th. Visit the United Way online for more details and to sign up. Councillor Paul Sharman is hosting an online drop-in Zoom meeting for residents to ask questions and share feedback on community matters. The meeting will take place on Wednesday, May 20th from 7 to 8 p.m. For more information, you can call 905-335-7600, extension 7454, or you can email rosemary.fitzpatrick at burlington.ca. For those of you viewing in Burlington and Oakville, Sports Week with Steve Foxcroft starts at 7 o'clock tonight, followed by Burlington Matters at 7.30. At 8 p.m., Kimberly Calderbank stops by with an episode of Community Cultures. And now for those of you in Milton and Halton Hills, we're bringing you Gaming Now tonight at 7.30, and Alex Hilson brings you around Acton on a new episode of Acton Up. Get Legal with Samantha Glass goes on at 8, and then Your TV presents Community Beat at 8.30. I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in and wish you all a safe and happy Victoria Day long weekend. If you'd like more content, you can please visit us at yourtv.tv or follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Your TV Halton. For Halton News, I'm Jessica Kading, and I'll see you Tuesday at 5.30.